Hello, everyone. Thanks for stepping in to take a look at this, this finals prep workshop. My name is Kevin Potts. I'm an academic advisor over in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Now, like pretty much everything else in the world right now, the whole coronavirus pandemic that we're all living through and, and all the, the measures that we're, we're taking to try to stop the spread of the coronavirus, these things are having a major impact on most likely the way that you're thinking about your, your academics. And specifically, they may impact the way that you're thinking about your final exams. You know, maybe you're not really even thinking about finals at this point. Maybe you have other things uh, on your mind these days, and that would be perfectly understandable. So I'm gonna talk about uh, how you can prepare for your final exams, kind of from the perspective of how things might look a little bit different given the, the current situation that we're all in. So we'll start out just talking a bit about how you can best be prepared. How are you going to know what to expect on the day of your, your final exam? We'll talk a bit about logistics. So very important things like when are your exams going to be? And also what's the test taking process going to look like, especially now that everything has gone online? How is that going to impact the way that your final exams are given? Then I'll talk a little bit about some obviously very unique challenges that have been put in place as a result of all, again, all these measures that, that we're taking to stop the spread of coronavirus, how that might be impacting the way that you go about studying for finals, but also to, to try to be a bit more positive about it. I want to look also at what might be some opportunities that have been presented by this, this very unique situation. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about procrastination. So very generally, why do we procrastinate? Why is it uh, something that, that is so common? But why specifically might it even be more common and, and more likely to occur uh, given the current situation? So what is it about what we're all living through right now that might um, lead to even greater procrastination. And so how can we avoid it? And then I want to finish up just by kind of reminding you all that, you know, we're in a time now that might seem like kind of like a suspended reality. And it's going to be important for you to remember that there will be, you know, what I'm calling here a post-coronavirus future where things return to some, at least some semblance of normalcy. And it's gonna be important for you to, to think about the fact that your grades right now, even though everything seems surreal right now, your grades are gonna matter just as much now as uh, your grades last semester mattered, right? So it's important to think about the future um, and how that's gonna look even though we're in such a strange kind of surreal time right now. All right, so starting out, know what to expect on exam day. So obviously know what's going to be covered. Very importantly, is the final gonna be cumulative? Uh, are there sections that are gonna be represented more heavily than others? Uh, if it's not a cumulative exam, is in an exam that's only going to cover material from the previous uh, exam? Those sorts of questions. These are things that you should definitely contact your instructor about if it hasn't been made clear already what those are. And start by going back through your syllabus. So take a look at your syllabus and see if you can use that to pull out the main points from the, the semester. So what's the most important material that you should be looking at as you get prepared to study. And then as you go through that syllabus and you start to pick out the main ideas, think about sort of a, a confidence level in the various 
units that you've gone through. So how confident are you in the material that you've covered? And my suggestion would be to focus on the less understood material early on. There's a tendency to put off this material until later in the game as you're studying, uh, sometimes to try to cram it in even the night before you uh, take the final. That does not really work very well. There's pretty good evidence out there to suggest that material that you don't know very well is only going to stick in your long-term memory if you actually start to look at it well ahead of time. So any material that you try to fit into studying, say, the night before or the morning of the exam, you're not going to absorb that material very well. So look at that less understood material as early on as possible. Another very important question that you should ask your instructor if you don't already know this is what percentage of your grade is going to be covered by the final exam because that ought to dictate how much time and effort you put into studying for each of your finals. You know, you're going to want to study, obviously, a lot more for something that's 40% of your grade versus 10% of your grade. And then what's the format? You should have a pretty good sense of what this is going to be just based on previous exams in the class. So is it going to be a multiple choice exam, short answer, so on. Again, go back through your previous exams to, to get a sense of what sort of uh, exam the, the instructor writes. Okay, logistical issues. When are your exams scheduled and how are they going to be proctored? So first of all, check your syllabus for the date and the time of the, the final exam. These dates and times should not change as a consequence of, of what's going on now in terms of the, the switch to online learning, but do check with your instructor to make sure that he or she is still planning to administer the, the exam in the initially intended format because instructors are gonna have a little bit of leeway in how they decide to assess you for final exams. But in any case, you can look up the date and the time of your exam if you aren't sure, or if you just want to double check, you can go to this website and that will give you um, the date and the time of your final based on the date and the time, or I should say the days and the time uh, when your class usually meets. And then again, talk with your instructor about how they plan to administer their exams online. Now, Generally speaking, online exams are completed with your webcam on and with a proctor monitoring the exam. This is, uh, I say in general, because again, instructors are going to have um, some leeway in how they intend to proctor their exam, even how assessment is going to look for their, their final exam. So do check with your instructor to make sure that this is in fact the format that you're gonna be following. All right, quickly some study strategies for finals. Uh, making flashcards helps a lot of students, especially in classes like anatomy or um, math classes where you have a lot of terms to memorize or formulas to memorize. Making lots of flashcards and going back through them over and over and over again is a great way to help those terms or those concepts stick in your mind. But again, start this early on or else those things are not going to stick. Do practice problems and do them multiple times. And in fact, I would suggest going back through old quizzes, old exams, again, especially in classes like uh, natural sciences classes, math classes. Go back through and just do all of the problems that you've done over the course of the semester and do them over and over again. Go back over your notes to a certain extent. I would say don't go back and try to reread all of your notes. When you go back through your notes, try to pick out main points from those notes, right? Don't worry so much about details at this point because a final exam cannot go into that much detail. 
but look for main points. And specifically, as you look for main points, try to turn those main points into questions. So try to think about questions that could be generated from each of the main points in your notes. Study guides. Study guides are very much your friend at this point. So if your instructor or your TA did not create a study guide for your final exam, just ask them for one. They might be willing to put one together. And if your instructor or your TA did create a study guide for you, think of that as like a window into the way that they're thinking about the final exam, right? So an instructor is not gonna spend a whole lot of time putting together a study guide with material that for the most part will not show up on the final exam. So if you see something on the study guide, think of that as a piece of information that your instructor is thinking about as he or she is making the final exam. And then review sessions. I know that we're all working virtually now, but there are still going to be review sessions happening. So check with your instructor or your TA, most likely your TA, to see if there's gonna be any sort of virtual review session. That might be over Zoom or it might be over Slack. All right, so I mentioned Slack. Slack is a really great resource for communicating with, again, with other members of your class, with your TA or with your instructor, largely with, with sort of quick questions. All right, so in Slack, you can create these channels here. You can create a channel for, say, a study group in your, in your class, or there's maybe a channel for the entire class. And then in blue down here, you can direct message individuals in your class. So if you had a quick question for somebody in your lab group, for example, you just send them a Slack message or you can send a direct message to your instructor, right? So this is another one of those opportunities that you have as a consequence of, of all this social distancing. You can just fire off a quick question to your instructor and ideally they're on Slack these days and they'll get back to you. So if in the course of your studying, something came up and you, you know, otherwise would have had to walk to your instructor's office to ask them this question, just send a message on Slack. All right, if you don't yet know how to use Slack, uh, there is a really nice tutorial that ASU has put together down here. And I should say that all classes at ASU should have dedicated Slack pages that, that connect to the wider ASU community at this point. But if for whatever reason your class is not connected with Slack right now, just ask your instructor to get that set up. All right, procrastination. Procrastination is a problem all the time. So even under the best of circumstances, we all have a tendency to procrastinate. What I think is kind of interesting about this current moment that we're all living through is that given the circumstances, procrastination might be an even larger issue right now for many of us. So from this New York Times article, which was um, kind of summarizing a, a recent study that was done by a group of psychologists, they said procrastination isn't a unique character flaw, but a way of coping with challenging emotions and negative moods induced by boredom, anxiety, insecurity, frustration. So does any of that sound familiar to anyone? <laughs> you know, is anyone else out there experiencing feelings of boredom, anxiety, insecurity, or frustration right now? Because I know that I am. So if we think about this, it makes sense that we might have an even greater tendency to put off studying, to put off things that might seem um, less important at this time. So procrastination is likely to be an even bigger issue now than, than ever, really. Think of it as a coping mechanism, a way to cope with what we're all going through at the moment. 
And so if you know that, if you know that procrastination is a likely coping mechanism, well, you can fight the urge to, to give in to, you can fight the urge to, to give in to the, the urge to procrastinate. So how are you gonna do that? My suggestion would be to, first of all, create a, a study schedule, stick to that schedule, but the way that you're gonna to stick to it is with periodic goals. And after you've completed each of these periodic goals, you wanna reward yourself, right? Give yourself a really worthwhile reward and only reward yourself if you've actually met the goal. So why is that? Again, going into kind of the psychology research behind this, is we tend to place a higher value on short-term rewards than we do on longer-term rewards. So <clears throat> a really famous study from, from many years ago now looked at this question of uh, just asking people, would you rather have $10 now or would you rather have $50 in six months? This may be surprising, but most people would say, I would rather have $10 now. So rather than waiting six months and getting a lot more money, I'd rather just take $10 now. So that suggests that we tend to place this higher value on short-term rewards. So that's where procrastination becomes a problem. So if you think about at point A here, this is where you're starting to think about maybe studying or maybe you're just thinking about finals at this point not really feeling any pain at this point because you're not really even thinking about finals. But as time goes on and you continue to procrastinate, the level of pain <laughs> goes up, right? Because at this point you're starting to realize, oh, the final is two days from now, right? And so you're starting to feel this level of pain, which might just be felt as anxiety, stress and anxiety. And then it gets to this point where finally, finally you decide to take some action, right? So you decide to start studying. This might be the night before the exam. Suddenly your stress level goes down because you suddenly know more of the material than you did before. And you get to point B here where you actually take the final exam. So if the short-term reward for not procrastinating is greater than the shorter-term reward of putting off work, of procrastinating, well, obviously you're gonna be less likely to procrastinate. So the idea here is set up a series of rewards along the, this curve here to kind of get you to the point where before you experience this big increase in pain right here, you get some reward and thereby you get to point B over here a lot easier, right? So you're starting at point A here, you're starting to feel a little bit of pain because you're worrying a little bit about finals. And so you set up the reward of, well, I am going to give myself a reward if I study for an hour today. So you do that hour of studying you get that reward and suddenly your pain level goes down because you've done a little bit of studying, right? And so you continue to do that until you get to B there where you're taking your final exam, all right? So if you set up those series of little tiny rewards along the way here, you'll never have the opportunity of getting to this very painful section of this curve here. So set up short-term rewards that are greater than the short-term rewards of procrastinating and you'll do okay. All right, so just to finish off, <clears throat> just wanna mention again, of course, we are all experiencing some very strange times right now, right? You can't go out to restaurants anymore unless you're doing takeout uh, large cities are more or less devoid of, of activity, which is very, very strange. 
you know, there's just not very much going on in, in public right now. So this is a very surreal time to be living through. But it's very, very important for you to remember that at some point life is going to go back to something resembling normal, right? And your grades this semester, in this suspended reality semester, your grades are going to matter just as much as they did last semester. And just as much as your grades next semester will matter. All right. So it's important for you to keep that in mind that just because it seems like we're in this strange um, state of suspended reality, well, your grades are still going to matter right now. And so if you can think about that, think about the fact that you're going to have to put in the time and effort to, to study for your final exams and do well in your final exams, even if it seems extra difficult now with everything going on. Well, you'll thank yourself later if you start thinking about the fact that there is going to be this post coronavirus return to reality at some point. All right. All right, so that is all that I have for you all. I'm sorry that we couldn't do this in person. I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to hear all of your suggestions for, for what you all do to study for finals. But if you do have any questions about anything that I presented here today, you can feel free to contact me. My, my email address is there. It's kevin.potts at asu.edu. Or of course, feel free to contact your academic advisor with any other questions. All right, thank you everybody.